Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Redstone video and in this one we're going to be doing something very different indeed. For those who don't know, Minecraft Pocket Edition just gained access to Redstone resources. Now I'm going to be honest, they're relatively limited, consisting mainly of Redstone dust and Redstone torches, but all that means is, is that we're going to have to get fairly creative with our Redstone circuits. Thankfully, I've put in the time and I've created 10 different circuits that you can build in Minecraft Pocket Edition. I hope you enjoy it, so let's crack on. Circuit number one is the monostable circuit, also known as a pulse limiter. Now what this does is creates a really short pulse through this redstone torch right here, and the input for this one can either be a button or a lever, and if it's a lever, it will only activate on the rising edge, aka when you turn the lever on. So to build this, you just place a block, a button, a redstone torch, a block, and then another redstone torch right there, a redstone torch off to this side, then hook up these two redstone torches here, and that is pretty much everything done. So that redstone torch right there is going to be your output, and if we just hit this button here, you can see we get a very quick pulse through all of that redstone right there. Circuit number two is of course the AND gate. Now this is exactly the same as the design that we use mostly on the PC. As you can see right here, we flick this lever, nothing happens, we flick both levers down, the light turns on, but if we only have one of the levers flicked down, then we don't get ourselves an output, which of course is the fundamentals of the AND gate, which is extremely important to redstone logic, with redstone being a Boolean logic system. Now you can see how to build this one, you just have to run inputs into each one of these redstone torches, connect them up using redstone, then have a redstone torch as your output, and that is your AND gate constructed. Next up, we have got this toggleable redstone clock. We can turn it off by turning on the lever, and we can turn the clock on by turning off the lever. Now, as you can see, it's relatively fast because, of course, we don't have repeaters to work with here. So this is a three-torch redstone clock, meaning that we have a three-tick redstone clock in front of us. Now, the cycle runs around like this, with this redstone torch unpowering this torch, which then unpowers this redstone, which powers this torch, which then unpowers the redstone torch. You get the idea. And once again, it's all one wide, very self-explanatory, so you should be able to build this one just fine. Now, for some reason, I know there's people out there who don't really like the vertical redstone clocks, so I've designed this one, which should hopefully float your boat. So as you can see right here, we've got redstone running around like this. This is our redstone cycle. Once again, it only uses three redstone torches, of course, if you want to increase the length of the redstone clock, then you just have to add more redstone torches, but it has to be an odd number, otherwise it's not going to work. Now we can toggle it on and off using this lever right here, and that lever can pretty much go anywhere, just to let you know. But anyway, all we have to do now is I'll show you how to build it by standing up here, and you can recreate it for yourselves. Moving on from the redstone clocks, we're going to be taking a look at another familiar circuit right here. This is the RS Norlatch, and you may have seen this a couple times in my builds just because I love this little circuit, simply because it's extremely simple. As you can see right here, when we hit this button, that will change the output, but if we hit this button again, nothing's going to happen because this is an RS Norlatch, and the only way that you can change the output of an RS Norlatch is to hit the opposite input of the current output, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So if you hit this button right here, that will change the output. We can spam this all day long and nothing will happen until, of course, we hit this button and then it will change once again. This is the way that you build it. It's extremely simple and it's very easy. Now that last circuit was familiar. This one definitely isn't very familiar because this is a T flip flop made only using the resources in Minecraft Pocket Edition. And I spent ages trying to solve this problem. And in the end, I actually had to Google it. It came up with a really interesting solution that I absolutely love. This is engineering at its finest. What we've got is a minecart with detector rails, then an RS and all latch over here. And if we hit this button right here, you can see our minecart moves across and that flicks the output of our RS null latch because of course the last input into the RS null latch is going to be this one right here but then when we hit the button once again of course the last input is going to be the opposite of what it was before mean that we get a change of state mean that we have ourselves a working T flip flop now this is a seriously interesting redstone circuit it's a little bit big and a little bit clunky but I absolutely love it now because this design is completely flat I'm just going to look straight down like this and you can copy it from the screen right there and as you can see, it consists mainly of just redstone dust and then the detector rails and everything like that. Then off to the right hand side, we've got the RS and all latch that is featured in that section right there. That is exactly the same circuit as this one right here. And our output can be taken from either this redstone dust or this redstone dust on this side. So there we go. Circuit number seven is the pulse extender. Now, sadly, this is considerably more complicated than it would be on the PC or also on the console because, of course, we don't have any repeaters. But as you can see right here, we hit the button and our pulse is extended ever so slightly. Not by much, but that is all of the redstone that is required to do this one. And the way that we've done it is using various different redstone torch towers. So first off, this redstone torch tower gets powered, then this one, then this one as well. And it adds around about five ticks to the pulse length, which is okay, I guess. Now, because this build is fairly big and clunky for what it does, I'm not going to be doing a tutorial for this one. However, if you do have a PC and you fancy downloading this world, 
opening it up in Minecraft, then copying it block for block from Minecraft into your Pocket Edition, then you can definitely go ahead and do that. There is a world download down in the description if you do want to check all of this. We are now onto the last specific redstone circuit, and this one is a fairly advanced one. This is a dual edge monostable circuit. You can see we hit that button right there, and we get ourselves at two outputs, one at the start and one at the end. Now that works with levers or any form of input device, be it a pressure plate or anything like that. But as you can see, what I've essentially done is I've created a rising edge monostable circuit right here using the design from the start. And I've created a falling edge monostable circuit using the design from the start with a redstone torch running into the input section. So that essentially means that this redstone will turn off when we hit the button. Then when it turns back on, of course, that fires up the monostable circuit, giving ourselves an output through this redstone line right here, which means that we get one pulse from this one, one pulse from this one. That's at the start that one at the end. That's the logic behind all of it. Now these final two designs right here aren't necessarily circuits, they're more builds. These are things that you can create in Minecraft Pocket Edition using redstone that you could find useful. So for example, right here we've got ourselves three levers and we've got ourselves an iron door. If we flick this lever right here and this lever right here, then the door opens up. If we flick this one as well, then of course our door closes and any other combination of the levers, the door isn't going to open unless of course we do it like this. Now, the way that we've created this combination lock is simply using an AND gate. On every block that we want the lever to be down, we've placed a redstone torch on the back of it. On every lever that we want up, we just place redstone behind it, then we run that out into an inverter, and that creates this little system. And finally, for the last redstone contraption, we have got ourselves some disco lighting. If I hit this button right here, you can see all of the redstone lamps turn off in sequence, then turn back on in sequence, which means it looks really cool if you connect it up to a redstone clock. Now, of course, you wouldn't be able to use this specific redstone clock because you don't have access to repeaters, but you would have to use one of the ones from earlier, but it looks absolutely awesome and it will really blow your friends away in your Minecraft bases. But sadly, this design over here isn't expandable. If you want it to be more than three redstone lamps long, then you're going to have to do some pretty serious redstone work, but I'll quickly take you through it. First off, you want to place a block right here with a redstone torch on the side of that one, redstone lamp right there. Then you want to place redstone dust, a block, redstone torch and then redstone running around like this into this block right here, redstone torch, redstone lamp. Then pretty much repeat the same thing once again. So that is redstone dust there, a block, a redstone torch, and then your redstone running around like this into the block with the redstone torch and then the redstone lamp. And then the same thing once again, so that is block, redstone torch, and then your redstone running around like this. I've run out of iron, but we're going to continue. Block like that, redstone torch, redstone lamp, and there we go. That is pretty much the system. So now what we have to do is run a redstone dot into this block right here and power that using a redstone clock or a lever or something like that. And as you can see, we get our working sequential system. So we have it, ladies and gents. That rounds up today's extremely different video. You're not going to be getting many Pocket Edition videos from me unless, of course, all of you suddenly start requesting them. But I hope that you found this one useful. This should really help you out with your Pocket Edition redstone. But unfortunately, that's all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.